Item Number SCP-5168 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures The house containing SCP-5168 has been purchased by a Foundation front company and is to be barred from civilian entry. Civilians attempting to gain access to SCP-5168 or the house it is contained within will be deterred. SCP-5168-8 groups escaping captivity are to be recaptured and terminated. Any witnesses will then be given the cover story of the SCP-5168-8 group being a delinquent gang, all dressed in the appearance of the character Jeff the Killer, who have since been arrested. Families targeted by SCP-5168-A are to be placed through cognitive detail suppression measures, with property damages being attributed to a common burglary. To stop the uncontrolled manifestation of SCP-5168-A instances, various measures have been constructed to slowly vacate all families bearing children from Kitchover, Iowa. These include the shutting down of a local school district under the guise of budgeting issues, removal of multiple children's play areas, and the methodical offering of better housing to childbearing families by Foundation real estate from companies. Remaining families are to be placed under Foundation surveillance. The prominence of fairy circles in the area will be deemed typical to any civilians inquiring on it. Footnote 1. Fairy Circles – A Common Pattern of Fungi in a Ring Formation All civilian digging efforts in Kitchover are to be monitored heavily to prevent the further discovery of SCP-5168-A corpses. Description SCP-5168 is a modified Tandy 1000 RL computer, which constantly flashes artwork of the fictional horror character Jeff the Killer across its monitor, located inside of a suburban house in Kitchover, Iowa. SCP-5168 functions in this manner even when separated from a power source or internet access. Internal wiring contains fungal hypha strands instead of normal conductors. SCP-5168 cannot be removed from the household, as its external wiring has been altered with several cords of unknown purpose, which run through the entire house and into the ground below. Subterranean image viewing shows this wiring leads to a large unidentifiable mass approximately 3,000 meters below the ground. This mass marginally changes shape between viewings. When a prepubescent child in Kitchover awakens as a result of a nightmare or night terror, SCP-5168 shuts itself down. This is immediately followed by the manifestation of 7 to 15 humanoid entities identical to common depictions of Jeff the Killer, designated SCP-5168-A, within the premises. After the manifestation of SCP-5168-A instances, SCP-5168 promptly restarts and returns to its normal behavior. SCP-5168-A are primarily composed of tightly interwoven networks of mycelium and sclerotium, with pale external pigmentation and facial structure abnormalities, giving them the appearance of Jeff the Killer. Instances manifest with a kitchen knife affixed to their left hand, which is significantly dulled and functionally useless. SCP-5168-A express no signs of complex sentience nor sapience. After manifestation, SCP-5168-A instances will leave the premises and slowly advance towards the awoken child's location, avoiding or destroying any obstructions as necessary. SCP-5168-A will non-fatally incapacitate any individuals hindering their advance, usually overpowering them with their group strength. Once they have reached the child, the SCP-5168-A group will huddle around them quietly while repeating the phrase, go to sleep. Several SCP-5168-A instances will tuck the child under any available blankets and sheets. Once the child is in bed, other instances perform various actions and presumed attempts to make the child return to sleep. These commonly include giving the child cookies and a warm glass of milk if such items are available, making the child sandwiches using available ingredients, utilizing their knives to spread condiments and cut foods as needed, attempting to read the child any books in the vicinity. This consists of the instance repeating go to sleep with tonal variations while holding said book, singing go to sleep repeatedly to the tune of various lullabies. 
Despite the mental trauma these events would subsequently entail, children targeted by SCP-5168 are not scared by their arrival, the cause of which is undetermined. Once the child is asleep, the SCP-5168-A instances will retreat outside the child's location, then proceed to bury each other in a circular formation around the residency whilst humming lullabies. SCP-5168-A then expire and degrade at an increased rate. While undergoing decomposition, SCP-5168-A grow excessive amounts of Amanita muscaria fungi across their body. These fungi are notably capable of causing drowsiness and unconsciousness if ingested, eventually inducing a comatose state if consumed in high enough quantities. Addendum 5168-1 Incident 5168-A on February 3, 2021, following the manifestation of SCP-5168-A instances and their advance towards the targeted household, the target child, Caden Noham, underwent a fatal allergic reaction after being given a peanut butter and jelly sandwich by an SCP-5168-A instance. While the SCP-5168-A group appeared more distressed after this event, they otherwise continued their normal pattern of behavior. This event resulted in previously unrecorded phenomena at the location of SCP-5168. The following is a transcript of the occurrences at the containment site. Begin Log Location SCP-5168 Containment Site Front Yard 2340 Tremors begin to resound from underneath the house, and cracks form across the lawn. Massive fungal structures emerge out from these cracks. They grow to approximately 3 meters in height and eventually cease motion. A single large eye opens across each of the caps, which moves rapidly and appears to be crying. The eye contorts into a toothless mouth, which opens and produces an infantile scream. The mouth on the structures contort back into the eye. This process repeats itself indefinitely. Containment Room 2342 the cords on SCP-5168 begin moving vigorously. SCP-5168 rapidly shuts itself back on and off, causing SCP-5168-A instances to appear in unprecedented amounts. These entities immediately run out of the house, trampling each other to leave as quickly as possible. Front Yard 2345 SCP-5168-A begin emerging from the house and throwing themselves onto the ground, their arms outstretched. They mutter, go to sleep, repeatedly. SCP-5168-A are occasionally seized and consumed by the fungal structures when their mouths are present. Agent Janison returns from the Noham residence after calling Foundation medical personnel to the house and further containing the situation. Janison, exiting her vehicle. What the hell is- SCP-5168-A instances collectively shush Janison, then resume previous behavior. What the fuck? Janison leaps over several SCP-5168-A lying in her path. She observes the fungal structures, and they observe her when eyes are present. Janison enters the containment site. Containment Room 2354 the cords of SCP-5168 continue to move vigorously. A humanoid entity with pale orange skin and no facial features emerges from the floor of the containment room, floating towards SCP-5168. Small orifices across its chest open periodically and release yellow spores. Several external wires from SCP-5168 appear to be attached to the base of its neck, while some wires still remain feeding into the ground. The entity makes typing motions slightly above the keyboard of SCP-5168, which causes a computer menu to appear on its screen. It rapidly types various strings of letters into this menu, the exact language of which are unknown. The ground tremors and the entity spasms momentarily before resuming typing. Hall to Containment Room 2357 Janison stumbles over several deceased SCP-5168-A instances. One suddenly grabs her leg and shushes her, causing her to stomp on its head instinctually. The head explodes into spores. Janison covers her mouth and continues her way towards SCP-5168. Containment Room 2359 Janison enters the containment room and the entity turns towards her. Janison withdraws her firearm. What? Get on the damn ground! 
A mouth appears sideways on the entity's face. Jameson's mouth disappears. She drops her weapon and puts both hands over her lower face. The entity speaks in Jameson's voice. Get on the damn ground. Go to sleep. Jameson falls unconscious. Her mouth returns and the entity's mouth disappears. It promptly resumes typing. The entity presses on the keyboard's enter key, and multiple archaic sigils appear across the entire screen of SCP-5168, followed by it shutting down and promptly rebooting. The entity descends back into the floor. Front Yard, 2405. The mouths on the fungal structures cease screaming. They morph into eyes. The eyes close. The structures slowly shrink back into the ground, which reseals itself. Surviving SCP-5168-A immediately stand and disperse towards multiple different target houses, as the screams of the fungal structures caused multiple children in the area to awake from nightmares. End log. Janison's sudden loss of consciousness caused alerts to be sent to Foundation agents already responding to Caden Noham's death. These agents requested further backup and all SCP-5168-A instances were found and terminated accordingly. Janison later made a mostly full recovery, except for acute discusia and insomnia, which has yet to subside. Footnote 2. Discusia, an impaired sense of taste. Updates to the containment procedures for SCP-5168 are pending following this incident. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to Everborn, Joe Light, The Bone Man, Brody Hartman, Rubbishbin69, and Doomsday LLC, Prince and Design. If you'd like to help support the channel, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.